fruit in whole form. So um, has fructose, but has fiber. So uh, thumbs up, thumb sideways, or thumbs down for fruit consumption. Fruit is fine. Fruit juice is not. Great. Thank you. White rice versus brown rice. And among the white rices, the sticky rice um, and the rices with added sugars, which you find in, in a lot of um, in a lot of restaurants. Brown rice because of the fiber. White rice, polished, you know, number one, all the vitamin B1 gone. And, of course, a much larger glucose excursion. That glycemic index thing, which, of course, I hate is – it's glycemic load that matters, and that is a very high glycemic load. So brown rice. So brown rice is better than white rice. Yes. Okay. In a meaningful way. In a meaningful way. Okay. Um, earlier, you mentioned tomato sauce. I love tomato sauce that's made from just tomatoes. Can tomato? So is are most tomato sauces filled with sugar? Perfect. Our little uh, recommendation engine looked at this question, and it turns out that. Only 10% of the available tomato sauces out on the market don't have added sugar. So you have to know which ones. Well, you can look yourself or you can look up Perfect, and it will tell you which ones you can buy. If people chose to consume bread, which many people do, uh, is there a way to just across the board without just baking your own or, see, or looking at the ingredients list to make a better choice? Is it like sourdoughs tend to have less sugar than blank? Um, well, sourdough has been fermented, so it will have actually consumed some of the sugar, so it would be a better choice. But really, the best choice is the highest fiber breads. Now, if you look at a wheat berry, it is 25% fiber. The husk is 25% of the weight of that wheat berry. That means that the carbohydrate to fiber ratio of a wheat berry is 3 to 1. So... A good bread should have a carbohydrate to fiber ratio of somewhere between 3 to 1 to 5 to 1 tops. Anything above that means that they've stripped the fiber away. So that's something you could do. But the easier way is to actually look it up on Perfect. You mentioned meat and meat sourcing, um, egg and chicken sourcing earlier. Maybe we just revisit that. Um, meat, fish, and eggs, uh, thumbs up, thumbs sideways, thumbs down, or it depends. It depends. It depends on where the meat came from. It depends on whether it was pasture-raised. depends on whether it's organic or not. If the uh, animal was injected with antibiotics, stay away from it because those antibiotics are in the meat. They're going to basically sterilize your gut, and then the bad bacteria are going to take over. We haven't really talked much about the microbiome today, but that's a whole podcast all by itself. Well, we can touch on it a little bit more, uh, from low sugar fermented foods, thumbs up, thumb sideways, thumbs fermented down. Fermented foods, short chain fatty acids, all good. What are your favorite sources of fermented foods? I like kimchi. Yeah. I like kimchi too. I like some of the live sauerkrauts. Yeah. That's also good, but with the right, you know, the right, uh, accout accoutrement. Yeah. Um, the one thing I would be, uh, uh, careful about is yogurt. Okay. So there are yogurts with live cultures, and there are a whole lot of yogurts with dead cultures. And if it's a yogurt with dead cultures, it's kind of irrelevant, and the chances are they've actually covered up the sourness with sugar. So, you know, large commercially available yogurt, be very, very careful, okay? If it's a, you know, artisan yogurt, you know, made by, a, you know, people you know or trust, you know, that's a very different story, um, you know yogurts with live cultures. Intermittent fasting, do you practice it and what do you think about it? Um, I don't practice it, but I am for it, for the right patient. Turns out who's the right patient? The patient with liver fat because the reason it works is because it gives the liver a chance to basically burn off the fat that it's stored. Zero calorie soda. <laughs> Got it. It's definite no. And I don't even have to ask about <laughs> sugary soda. Because that's, uh, that's, that, that's basically just poison in a can. Food combinations. Uh, I have a feeling I know what your answer is, but the glycemic index, which we know your feelings on now, um, asserts that if you combine some fat with a sugary, like, like eating ice cream, you have a more blunted insulin response than if you were to eat pure sugar of equivalent calories. But um, 
what are your thoughts on food combinations as a way to blunt the insulin response? Food combinations are great if there's some fiber associated with it. It comes back to fiber again. And by the way, and by the way, uh, I, you know, full disclosure, I am the chief medical officer of a fiber company. What is it? It is called BioLumen, and it is a proprietary fiber. It is a uh, microcellulose sponge, seven microns in diameter, so the size of a red blood cell. You swallow it. It goes to your stomach. It expands 70-fold over its original size, and so it'll give you a feeling of fullness because it's taking up space in the stomach. But more importantly, when it expands, the nooks and the crannies in the sponge become available. And embedded in those nooks and crannies are a set of proprietary hydrogels, soluble fiber, which sequester glucose, fructose, sucrose, simple starches, and render them unavailable for early absorption in the duodenum, thus reducing the glucose response, reducing the insulin response, protecting the liver, and moving it through the intestines so that microbiome can chew it up for its own purposes, feeding the gut. We can reduce glucose absorption by 36%, fructose absorption by 38%, sucrose absorption by 40%, simple starch absorption by 9%, and increase short-chain fatty acid production by 60% without an increase in gas. When do people take this? With the meals. Okay. So it, it, it comes as a sachet, um, one teaspoon, sprinkle it on your food or take it as a, you know, in a drink, you know, just mix it in and slug it down and then eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And it will basically act like you ate real food. It will turn processed food into real food in the intestine. And we have clinical trial data that demonstrates that. Is it available as a commercial It product? is available. Yeah. It okay. is called Munch Munch. Now, I hate that name. I, I hate didn't it make too. it up. <laughs> well, I'm going to... You, just, you need to get your marketing... that. <laughs> get it. Your marketing team sucks, but the product sounds amazing. Yeah, um, so biolumin.tech. Yeah. Great. Thank you for that. <laughs> Sorry, Munch Munch marketing team, but you got to <laughs> munch munch to a new product name. 